I've been making motorcycling content for YouTube and other social media networks since 2017. I've tried a lot of cameras, including the six you see here in front of you, and I'm happy to say I finally found one that seems to work and work all the time and do exactly what I need it to do. They don't make action cams with motorcycle content creators in mind. It's just a sad universal truth of the industry. These cameras are designed to be held in your hand or on a mount or on a stick or something and record video. And then most of the time that video is synced up to some cool hip hop track or in some kind of montage or something. Or you use the external mic because you're not moving at 60 miles an hour, which is a problem on a motorcycle. But they're not really designed with strong support for external microphones. Now, it is sometimes added as an afterthought by companies. You know, you can buy external mic adapters like this one and this one and this one. So if you're like me and you want to ride around and talk in your helmet and have the audio be audible and useful, then um, you might be interested in the setup I finally landed on that seems to be working really well for me. And I'm gonna tell you all about that, but first I kinda wanna walk you through the other things I've tried and why these cameras have not worked for me. So consider this a mini review of these six or seven cameras uh, before we get to the final review, which is the one I'm gonna continue using. So let's start at the beginning. It's the camera I actually don't have because I sold it a long time ago. And that is my original GoPro Hero 3 and I had a GoPro Hero 4. Those cameras were fine for what they were in the beginning. The picture quality wasn't fantastic. The stabilization was nearly non-existent and the old footage looks crappy by comparison to uh, newer action cameras that I've used. One big advantage of those early ones was that there was no proprietary mic adapter BS like there is nowadays. It was literally just a USB adapter into a mic jack and you could plug in any microphone you wanted. You could use any one of those adapters you could find. It did not have to be a GoPro unique, GoPro manufactured thing. There was no unnecessary barriers to you being able to add audio and it actually worked kind of well back then. But that setup had its limitations and its drawbacks and uh, I did eventually upgrade to the GoPro Hero 7 that you see here. This was a big upgrade for me and a big deal because back then I, I wasn't making any money on my YouTube channel. So it was a big deal to spend any money on it, particularly almost $400 on a new camera. But the picture quality was so much better. The stabilization was so much better. The addition of the rear screen made filming camping videos and things like that so much easier. And this camera worked really well for me, had great picture quality, okay battery life, but that was the generation that GoPro introduced their stupid proprietary mic adapters. But it's the only way to get audio into a Hero 7 or above. They all have needed proprietary GoPro manufactured mic adapters. And because GoPro loves money, I guess they don't enable it to be used any other way. You have to have their adapter. The, the audio is encrypted or otherwise inaccessible. The Hero 7 was a big upgrade in terms of picture quality, but this thing is notorious for overheating. Uh, I would lose sound. That's the thing about these proprietary adapters. They work most of the time, but there will be times when you have no sound at all. Like if it gets jiggled loose or whatever, it's not like it just switches to the external mic like you would think that's what it would do. But no, you just have no sound at all. So your footage is almost completely useless. I cannot tell you how many times that happened to me with this camera and this mic adapter. Um, I struggled with the 7 for a while. It worked well enough, but eventually when the 9 came out with the front screen, that was a big deal and I wanted that for, for vlogging purposes. It is so much easier to film yourself with the front screen. So when the 9 came out, I upgraded to that. And shockingly, you're gonna find this is not very favorable for GoPro throughout. I had nothing but problems with this from the start. You can look at my first time solo motorcycle camping video, one of the very first videos I filmed with this camera, and the audio sounds like I'm underwater, and the quality is just shifting back and forth. And I've camped by myself a half dozen times, handful of times, and I've dispersed camped half a dozen times, handful of times, but I've never dispersed camped by myself off the motorcycle before. And that was with an $80 media mod mic adapter that you have to buy to use it um, with an external mic or just supposedly it gives you better sound than the built-in microphones. I don't know about that. I've never really noticed a huge difference. The sound quality is inconsistent and sometimes non-existent. The other thing I don't like about using this as a helmet cam is you have to attach this to the camera and put all of this on the front of your helmet. It's super heavy and bulky, unnecessarily so. Overheating problems. Audio problems abound. 
The only time I use this camera is when I'm holding it in my hand filming myself so that I can see right then if something goes wrong with it, if it crashes or whatever. Quick capture doesn't work very well. It will crash on you occasionally. This one has hindsight, which is supposed to enable you to just run it on a constant 30 second loop so that if something cool happens, you can hit the button and you'll have the last 30 seconds. The only thing that ever seemed to do for me when I was using it was crash my camera. And GoPro doesn't really fix these issues as far as I can tell because they release a new camera every year. So once this one comes out, unless there's any like absolutely 100% you know, game breaking bugs, they just don't fix them. They just move on to the next camera and just say, oh no, we'll buy the 10, buy the 11. The most use I've gotten out of these nines lately is I use them as a webcam on my live streams. It actually looks a lot better than any of my other webcams. After struggling with all, with all of my GoPros, finally, my good friend, Nathan Fant, who you know from For the Love of Knobs, along with Amanda as the Magpie Flies and Travis, Explore Adventure Moto, all got into the Osmo Action, the original Osmo Action. This was their first GoPro competitor from Osmo, and this thing just works. It just works. Most of the on-bike footage you've seen for the last two or three years have been on this little camera, Osmo Action. Uh, it doesn't have as good a picture quality as the GoPro. It really doesn't. It does have a front screen, it's a little bit smaller form factor, but this thing always works. Anytime you hit the button, it works. It turns on, it turns off, never crashes, never loses audio, never fails, and you can use third-party external mic adapters to attach to this thing. You don't have to spend a whole bunch of money because GoPro's not taking a chunk out of this. They just want you to be able to use a microphone. So. I, to this day, recommend this original Osmo Action for anyone that wants to get started motovlogging or filming anything of any kind outdoors because they just work and they're super cheap. But there's one massive flaw with this camera, and that is the gain on the audio when you use an external mic. It is way too high and it blows out the sound and it just clips and sounds like crap all the time. I have tried adjusting the volume inside the camera. I've tried mono, I've tried stereo, I've tried turning off the wind noise reduction, turning up the wind noise reduction. Nothing fixed it until I went out and bought, and this was on Travis's advice, this inline volume control, and you turn it down literally 85% of the way, and then I just boost the sound in post-production. The camera works great most of the time, but there is one major flaw, and that is I need this piece of equipment, something else strapped to my helmet, stuffed up in the pads, when I already have like a six foot mic cable and a bunch of crap in there. There are shorter versions you can use. This is another one of these inline mic ad volume adjusters, but if you're gonna use a helmet mic with an Osmo Action, you need to add that external volume control. They're not expensive, they're not difficult to use. It's just annoying that it doesn't just work. In the middle there, I had the opportunity to test out the Ghost XL Pro. This is the only camera here that I haven't paid for with my own money. This was given to me, and actually they paid me to do an overview video that some of you may have seen. I had super high hopes for this because it has incredibly long battery life, stabilization, all kinds of features that I thought were gonna be really good, but at the end of the day, the picture quality just wasn't very good. And uh, so I haven't used it because the stabilization is not fantastic either. So this is, I think, a great dash cam, but it's not great for content creation, in my opinion. I stuck with the Osmo Action forever, used the GoPro Hero 9 just for filming off the bike. And when they announced the Osmo Action 3, I was insanely excited because it's supposed to be everything the Action 1 is, but better. The Ox Action 2 was weird. They went into some weird modular vlogging camera design. Wasn't great for motor vlogging, but the Action 3 has a huge battery capacity like supposed to be way longer, like three hours or something like that crazy when normally you get about 45 minutes. Better picture sensor, bigger screen on the front. It's also got magnetic mounting so it can go horizontally, vertically, quick switching, tons of cool features. Great camera. I thought to myself, surely they've fixed the gain issue, right? And I got the camera and sure enough, there's a gain adjustment that you can move up and down on the camera. Awesome. Uh, I finally found a mic adapter that worked with it. Not all of them do which sucks, but uh, you don't have to buy the first party mic adapter, but you cannot adjust the gain below zero. You cannot adjust the gain to negative. And the default volume is way too loud for a helmet camera. Same problem with this. Even though there's a gain adjuster on here, I was gonna have to use the inline volume control again. And that made me mad because uh, I didn't want to have to have extra crap on my helmet. I just want the damn thing to work. Otherwise, this has been rock solid, works when you turn it on, no problems. But that, that audio thing, the audio not just working, drives me nuts. Well, a year ago, I was at the Get On ADV Fest and met Jake the Garden Snake for the first time. Cool guy. 
Obviously, he knows a lot about content creation because he's been doing it longer than anybody on a motorcycle, and he had a full Insta360 setup, and he said, this is the camera you need to go with. This is the Insta360 One RS. I was reluctant or skeptical because I knew we got him for free, and also I just didn't want to deal with the whole 360 thing. I wasn't really interested in the 360 thing, so I thought, eh, can it really be that good? About two months ago, I got pretty frustrated with this whole setup and I was like, screw it, I'll just get one with a 360 camera and that'll be like a fun gimmick. And then I'll try it as my helmet cam and if it works for that, I'll get another one. Well, I got it. Works great as a 360 cam and it works even better as a helmet camera. The mic adapter is inexpensive. There is a negative gain control. You can turn the gain down to negative. So you have a lot of fine control over the gain depending on where you position your helmet mic. And I just got back from 10 days in Mexico running two of these cameras, zero issues, none whatsoever. Basically set so that when you hit the button, it turns on and starts recording. You hit the button again, it shuts off to save battery power. So I must have been powering both of them on and off 10, 12, 15 times a day, zero issues whatsoever. The picture quality is crisp, the audio sounds really good, and um, I'm thoroughly, thoroughly impressed with the Insta360. None of the issues that I've had with the other six, seven cameras that I've used. So. Going forward, I will be using the Insta360 ONE RS, and it has a bunch of added features because this, this is the modular one that comes apart, right? So, one, when I have two of these, that means I can share batteries and parts between them, but two, this all comes apart and I can swap this for a 360 lens, same camera. I don't need two cameras, so I just keep the 360 lens with me, and then when I wanna film 360 on my B camera, I'll just swap this out. You also can move the, the screen to front or back, so I keep it on the front when I'm filming on the helmet so I can see in my rear view mirror if it's working. But if I'm trying to shoot handheld or just off the bike, I'll put it on the back so that I can see what I'm shooting. The Insta360 app is great, it's useful. I had no problem pulling clips off of the uh, cameras while I was on the trip to like post on social media and stuff like that. And all in all, of everything I've tried, my personal opinion, and again, I paid for all of these except for this Ghost XL, the Insta360 is head and shoulders above the rest, and that is the camera I would recommend if you want to get serious about content creation um, and you don't mind spending $300 or more. Insta360 ONE RS, and you can get the combo that comes with the 360 lens and the regular lens. You can also just buy the 4K lens if you don't want the 360 lens, but it, it's about the same price, so you might as well get the 360 lens and screw around with it. If you don't like it, you don't like it. So yeah, that's my recommendation. That's, I mean, again, my personal opinion is kind of my journey. This is not like a showdown. Let's compare a bunch of footage. Like, I'm not a techie guy. Um, I'm just a person that wants my camera to work so that I can focus on content and writing and not spend a bunch of time adjusting ISOs and f-stops and stuff like that. So uh, for me, for my money, the Insta360 ONE RS is the camera I'm going to keep using and they do not pay me to say that. A, I paid them for the privilege of saying that. So I'll link that for you in the description. I'll link all these if you want to check them out. I do have an affiliate link for the Insta360 if you decide to get one or just pop over to Amazon, it doesn't make much of a difference to me. I enjoy getting a dollar or two here or there, but I also understand that if for some reason that makes you uncomfortable, don't sweat it. So if you have questions about the cameras, thoughts, if you have experiences with any of these, that'd be cool for you to leave in the comments. And uh, you know, I would love it if you would consider subscribing to the channel for more gear reviews and trips and cool stuff like that because I'm the dork on the road and I wanna be your internet riding buddy and I'm better than your regular riding buddies because I come with a mute button. Thank you for watching and please do not forget to be excellent to each other. I think you. Excellent! Yay!